There are people who believe that the US never actually sent anyone to the moon. What are their reasons? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. In 1969, Merle Haggard released a portrait of Merle Haggard. Love it. On vinyl. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. No, but something else happened. The United States sent someone to the moon. The Apollo mission, the fifth Apollo mission resulted with people, men, actually landing on the moon. Or did it? Well, I mean, this is a defining moment in uh, the history of technology, the history of mankind. I mean, certainly the history of, of uh, moon travel, of moon travel in uh, of the U.S. Okay, you probably already know this, right? You know that there are conspiracy theorists. I knew that there were conspiracy theorists out there who think that the entire thing was faked. We never landed on the moon. I've heard about it, and I'm curious as to what the reasons are. I know that's what you've got, right? Well, did you know that maybe as many as twenty percent of Americans? I mean, one survey said that 20%, up to 20% of the people surveyed didn't believe that it, that it actually happened. They thought that it was faked. Was this at conspiracytheorist.com survey? I don't know. Survey or? I think there are more people than you would realize that think this whole thing was faked. Hmm. And we're gonna talk today about their reasons and then we're gonna give the official response and then we're gonna let you decide. Now I'm gonna say a couple of things. First of all, we're not getting into all the reasons. We could have an hour long show about each one of these reasons. So I'm just giving you the sort of the very top line introduction to this conspiracy. Okay. Uh, and also giving you the uh, NASA's official response. And I'm not getting Good. into every single thing. These are just the major things. Okay. The major Tom things? For, uh, that's good, Link. Major Tom, ground control. David Bowie, some year, I can't remember. First of all, what was the motive? Why would we have faked it? Well, the reason would have been that we were in this heated space race with Russia and we could totally show them up. We could show Russia up by actually going to the moon and they're like, oh, they got there before we did. So that they believe that this was orchestrated by the government, that it was set up on a sound stage somewhere, potentially maybe in the desert somewhere. And the entire thing was just a huge, theatrical production to fool people and they have some interesting pieces of evidence to support mm. that. So they say that every Apollo mission Fakes. didn't happen. We every single one, not just the first one. We haven't been there. Okay. First thing is, all these pictures that they took while they were on the moon, they got no stars in them. The sky, I mean you can see for yourself, there are no stars. It's completely black. And the theory is, well first of all, when you look into the night sky, you see stars. Yeah, but there's dots like up there in the no, upper right. That's my screen. Oh, that actually is on, you're like that sneezing is, on your screen. That is dust on my screen. <laughs> I, I really thought those were stars. No. It's okay, I can is, see the earth, but it's now. It's pitch black. I see sneeze stuff, but I see no snars. And the idea stars. is. <laughs> snars. There's no snars and there's no stars. And they say, the reason there's no stars is because if they were to try to create like a theatrical, uh, appearance of stars, well they probably would have gotten it wrong and then mm -hmm. people wouldn't have been able to tell, oh those are fake, because if they were right here it would have looked like that and astronomers would have been able to break it down. So they just said, don't do stars at all. The director said that. Yeah, the director said no stars. Well, it may not seem like it, but this is NASA's official, this is NASA's official response. It may not seem like it, but the moon reflects a lot of light and you actually, because of the light from the sun that's being reflected off of the moon, you wouldn't be able to, according to NASA, see the stars. In fact, lots of people who have been to the moon say they can't see the stars with the, with the naked eye really? because of how much light is being reflected. But the exposures that they were using were very, very fast exposures, which doesn't let a lot let a light in, so the cameras, in order to expose properly for their surrounding environment, would not have actually exposed the stars to see okay. the stars. Well, that's, I'll go with NASA that, on this one. Go, really, are you convinced? You're not a conspiracy theorist? Well, I mean, the mechanics of cameras. Second thing is, the American flag that was put up on the moon to claim it for the US of A is waving. You can see from this video here, at this moment where they actually set it in the ground, uh, it's kinda hard to see, but you can see that when they're setting it around, it's kinda like waving around. Yeah. It's, this, this flag is waving around. Well, we're, on, we're in a vacuum. There's no air on the moon. There's no air currents. So how could the flag be waving? I mean, surely this is on a sound stage and somebody left the AC on and that thing is blowing around. I mean, how else can you explain that? I mean, it certainly is moving. It's not moving 
how it would move if it was being blown by air conditioning or like a fan though. It's it's hard to tell because it's like the frame rate is kind of weird too. Yeah, it is. Okay, NASA's official response to this is, if you watch closely, the flag is only moving after it's been touched. So you got something that's in a vacuum that's wavy like a flag and you and you touch it and you set it down, it's gonna wave until it settles. And also there's they had horizontal rods inside of the flag to make it stand out. So like you it, could see it. And they bent those as they were installing it. So it looked like it was mid flap. But you can see eventually it just- Oh, they, they made the rod, they bent them on purpose to simulate a waving flag? Well, it says they accidentally bent those, but I think it actually makes it look more cool because they did bend them. So I, 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 either way, they were bent and it looks like it's flapping, but you can see, you know, after a number of You don't of want your seconds, flag on a planet to be too taut. You want it to have yeah, a yeah, little- yeah. It's kind of dorky. Yeah, you want it, you're trying too hard. You, you want to simulate We're claiming air. this moon, but we're gonna claim it with some finesse here. I think that's, so I'm, I'm still with uh, NASA on this one. Okay, and in many of the missions, in many of the photos, there are these unexplained objects. One that has caught the most attention of conspiracy theorists is from the Apollo 12 mission. There's a reflection of something in the astronaut's helmet, right here. You see it, and you zoom. Well, I in see on another that. astronaut. Uh, no, it's oh, this in the thing upper right, right. Up, upper right hand corner. And this apparently, according to conspiracy theorists is like a can light, it's a studio light that is actually lighting him. That's not the sun that's lighting mm. him, it's a studio light. And there's lots of little, and you can go forever to spot these little things that seem to be unexplainable. You there, can find anything in a reflection, right? Well, scientific explanation of this is that these are, these are photos and videos that are developed on film, and there are so many different things that can happen either during the filming, whether it's a lens flare, or whether it's a smudge during the development process that can change and put something on there. This is a, this is a phenomenon called pareidolia, which is where you think that you're seeing something and you probably aren't. You're getting really in there. It looks like uh, a can light. Or I'm, it might be a can light, the whole thing might be staged. I mean, I'm going like literally on a stage. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i on the fence with this one. I'm gonna go with the uh, director's cut on this okay, one. Okay, all right, you've been swayed. It's interesting. Another thing that conspiracy theorists point out is that there's no landing crater under the eagle. That was the name of the landing, uh, the moon lander. So when they said the eagle, the eagle has, has landed. landed, it was not an actual eagle. They didn't have a pet mascot with them. The it, eagle has landed and it, it was, has not made a crater. It was that, uh, you know, the moon lander that landed. I mean, it does look relatively undisturbed underneath that thing. Yeah, so they say there's no crater. What about the thrust of the engines? Wouldn't they have? A, created a crater, and B, created a, lot, a huge dust cloud. I mean, we got moon dust up there that's light. It wouldn't have gone everywhere, right? Right. Well, it turns out that while the moon lander may be relatively heavy on Earth, it's one-sixth of its weight because of the less gravity on the moon. It turns out that one of these little lander pads, pedestals or whatever it is, would probably only have about the, the pressure of one-tenth of a car tire, the mm. average car tire meaning that it actually doesn't take that much thrust to propel this thing up and down. And so it wouldn't have created a huge dust cloud and it wouldn't have created a huge crater. And why is there like a bag of fast food on the ground under that in that close up though? I mean, I that seems suspicious. Astronauts get hey hungry. Hey guys, take a break. Let's 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 uh, take 5. We're going to bring in some fast food lunch in a sack. Now this one, I'm going I'm going with the uh Conspiracy theorist on that one. Really, you're, you've a, been swayed. You're there's too, a lunch too. sack under there. Okay, this one is intriguing. There are multiple photos taken from what seem to be, or purported to be miles apart, but they have the same background. You take these two photos, from uh, one's from the Apollo 15 mission, and you put them together, mm. you overlay you them. You've seen them. This is the same backdrop, the same exact mountains, and these photos are supposedly miles apart. This has got to be just a backdrop that they used in a studio. This is just a backdrop that they put, you know, a few hundred feet back or 20 feet back or whatever. Oh yeah, let's shoot it at a different, different angle. We don't need to buy another backdrop. Budgeting, hello, let's just shoot it a little bit. No, no one will notice. It turns out hmm. that while they are very, very similar, there are actually more than subtle differences between the two backdrops the same type of differences that you would expect with a parallax effect when you move, but the background is 
miles and miles away. Another thing is there's no pollution, there's no haze, there's no air on the moon, so that these objects could be 10, 20 kilometers away, which is what you would, ex the differences that you actually see are what you would probably expect if you were to move even a couple of miles to take a different picture. They're not the same, they have the parallax effect. Or maybe they're a backdrop. You know what, here's where I'm gonna land on this one. Okay. My eagle is gonna land right. on a little bit of both. They actually landed on the real moon mm -hmm. and f and they filmed it in every way that you see here, but then they came back, reviewed the footage, and they're like, you know, not compelling enough, let's get some pickups. You know how Hollywood people <laughs> oh. say, let's get some pickups, let's adjust the script a little bit. So they shot some on a, on a, uh, on a back lot in order to just fill in the details visually. So everyone's right, everyone leaves a winner. Are you just trying to make everybody happy, Link? Please just be happy, everyone. So that's a small, light introduction to the moon landing conspiracy. Did it happen, did it not? I think it did happen. Comment below, thanks for liking this video. You know what time it is. It's Megan and Totem from Stuttgart, Germany, and it's time to spin the wheel of... It's a killer! The best way to enjoy Good Mythical Morning is while wearing a Good Mythical Morning shirt and drinking from a Good Mythical Morning mug. You should try it. If you spill Good Mythical Morning drink on a Good Mythical Morning shirt, it doesn't stain. It's a science. <laughs> <laughs> Redlink.com slash store. Click through to Good Mythical More, our personal interactions with conspiracy theorists. What are the chances, Link? Link is an astronaut on Rhett's home planet. <laughs> cool. Welcome to Gondor. Greetings. <laughs> I am Neil. Link Neil, astronaut from Earth. I've known about you for some time, Neil. Do you speak English? I think I've made that clear. I've been studying you. We come in peace. Oh, that's what you're saying. But I know how this goes. You are weird. <laughs> Welcome to Gondor. Now I'm, we're going to kill you. Welcome to Gondor. Is it where the men stay? <laughs> is it, it's where, is uh, it where the men are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's near Rohan. <laughs>